this module, we'll explain how metering works and the related repairs. Symptoms include no regeneration, no salt use, no capacity decline on the control, or no flow indicator on the display. For an electronic meter on a 2510 valve, the first thing we will check if it is not metering is to make sure that all the connections are secure. On this SXT valve, there is a three pin connector that is at the bottom of the board. We check all of the pins to make sure there is no corrosion and all the pins are secure. If everything is good here, we move to the rear of the valve. We follow our cable to the meter. This style valve we just pull the pin directly out and locate the flat side to do our testing. We can run a magnet across this flat side and check our controller to see if we are registering flow. If we are registering flow, we need to replace the meter. This meter is replaced as an assembly as all of the components are sealed. To put in a new unit, we'll lubricate all of the O-rings press the unit in, and reconnect our cable. We can now move back to the front of the unit and test our operation. Some FLEC meters use different cables. They still test the same way by moving a magnet back and forth across them to register flow. The connectors to the controllers are still the same. This is our 2510 valve with a mechanical meter. We follow the cable over from the controller into the top of the meter. This is our 3 quarter inch meter assembly that is a paddle style meter. This is a common meter that is used on many valves. We check to see if the cable is secure into the top of the meter. We can pull upward to make sure that it is connected properly. There is a crimp at the end of the brass that holds it to the cable. This should be secure. The whole cable should rotate and you can check to make sure it is spinning the dial on the front of the valve. We can then move to the meter cap. There are four screws that hold the meter cap down. We loosen them all and remove it. We can now remove the cap by pulling upward. Inside this opening there are a series of gears. These gears allow us to count the water accurately. They are not able to be replaced so if there is any damage or inaccurate counting of water, we may need to replace this cap. We can then look inside the body and look to the impeller, checking to make sure that all of the gears are solid and there is no damage. We also check the bottom to make sure there is no wear that would cause it to go off balance. Inside the body, there is an O-ring seal. This makes sure that the cap is sealed down to the body. If we have a leak, this would be what we would look to for replacement. Check the body to make sure there is no other debris. We can then begin reassembly, replacing any components that were damaged. The O-ring should be lubricated with silicone compound. Make sure to use the approved lubricant. We place the O-ring onto the cap and reinstall it into the body. For note, it does not matter which orientation the cap goes on, just so long as the four screws line up. We press down, reinstall our four screws, and tighten them. Once the four screws are secure, we then take our meter cable and press it firmly into the center of the body. Once everything is secure, we can now repressurize the unit and test our progress. Good luck and thanks for watching.